Okay, well, we're recording now. <laughs> That's good. Let's do it. <laughs> the tremendous threesome has returned. This is Wrestling Talk, the world's oldest, longest running, and sometimes taking a vacation show. Yes. And I have been dragged kicking and screaming back into WrestleMania. I bought Peacock TV. Oh, my God, Len. I didn't buy the station. but There's a a great story on this. He's literally (laughs) texting me in the middle of the night, like late before he goes to bed or whatever, like 9 o'clock. And he says... Do I do it or not? And literally the next two days, he's like, I don't wonder if I should do it. I wonder if I should. I finally said, for nine bucks, I know you, I don't want to be, I don't want to call you cheap or anything, but for nine bucks, it's worth the egg. Just try it. If you don't like it, cancel it next month. You do it. $5.99 is not nine bucks. It's $5.99. That's even worse, Catlin. Nine dollars. Well, I'm cheap like Jack Benny. You you guys are too too young young for that. If you don't want the commercials, it's nine bucks. What? T- oh, good lord! I never did that. I don't care. Anyway, anyway, by the way, Leonard. Yeah. At the beginning of the show, when we were off air, you said to Jim and I, "Well, who wants to open a show?" In Jim's quote, and I quote, "Isn't that sure. your beeping job?" <laughs> <laughs> I might have said something like that. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go back to sleep. <laughs> anyway. Go ahead, Len. I have extensive notes that I took under duress because my memory <laughs> sucks. So when, right. I want to start with night one. Even All though right. I, I watched night two before I watched night one, okay? But you're going to get the reverse engineered version. Uh, okay. And let's start with the national anthem by Coco Jones. And on, night, what, on night one, right? On night one. What did you yeah. think of that? Uh, it was okay. It wasn't bad. Yeah. Who's, who's Coco Jones? No I, clue. I have no clue either. <laughs> and the first match we can speak of is Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley. And I, I had no oh, idea who Rhea Ripley was. Leonard, stop. Stop, oh, for a stop, long time. stop, stop. Time out. There's no way we can do a show by you saying that. She's the biggest and the hottest thing in women's wrestling right now. I'm being honest and transparent. I appreciate your honesty. But, all right, Becky Lynch, you know. Sometimes of lying course. is better, a little bit. <laughs> Do you want to start all over again now? No, 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 that's no, right. no, 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 absolutely not. This is organic. Let it go. No. Let it go, man. I mean, Especially you know that we're lying 90% makes me of the look time bad. anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, hey, so I have not really watched the wrestling product in a couple of years. So I had no idea who Rhea Ripley was. Uh, Becky Lynch faced her now becky lynch was big when i stopped watching and she's even bigger now well she's the man she's the man so why okay answer me this why is becky lynch the man and rhea ripley is mummy that's a mammy no it says says mummy no No, she's mommy mommy. well Well, either way it's mammy is a politically incorrect pancake box Oh, oh, what? Ah, Len. All right, look. How do I give you the short version of this? She is mommy, or mammy, as you say, because of Rey Mysterio's kid. Yeah, exactly. Oh, because Dominic turned evil. Yes, Yes. and Dominic, I'm going to say this about Dominic, and I think it's it's worth saying out loud. He is the most over heel I've seen in a long time. They hate him even in house shows. It's unbelievable. When he goes to get on the mic, they won't let him talk. It's amazing. It's a good heel. And that's Excellent. great. It is. Absolutely. I mean, that's real heel heat. Yep. Yep. You sure? He's tearing it up. Are you sure it's not hate heat just no. like, like Laurinaitis no. heat? No, this isn't. This isn't no, people, just, people. None of that crap. People hated John Laurinaitis because he was a jerk. Yep. Okay. Yep. People hate. When I say they hate, they hate him in the same sense that they booed Roddy Piper way back when he was a heel. I mean, I'm that that's and I know that's that's amazing company to put him with, but I, for some reason, 
This kid gets amazing heel heat, and it's not because he sucks. It's not because he's terrible in the ring or terrible on the mic. They just love to boo him out of the building. But this is going to go back to one of the things that Len and I talked about while we were preparing for this, because I just got dinner ready before I come on here with you guys. Mm -hmm. And Len and I were talking like I was getting ready, and we were um, chatting back and forth over the phone. And I said, one of the things is, this is the era right now that WWE is going into a huge era. And the reason that I think, and I was going to ask Ed this, because I already asked you, Lynn. Yep. They're, um, they're doing several things that I wasn't sure that they would ever do again. And it's things that you and I, talk, all three of us talked about for years. Give me a good product, wrestling. It doesn't have to be all wrestling, but give me enough wrestling to make it worth me bothering to watch it. Because yep. I don't want to watch eight out. And it was like a gargantuan amount of pay-per-view over the weekend. And you could have gone to independent wrestling shows and spent extra hours there. No, I had enough. Thanks. But there was plenty of to watch, but there's plenty of wrestling to watch. There's plenty of storyline to watch. And it's yeah. interesting. There's plenty of character development to watch. And they're taking their time and doing it. So the Rey Mysterio thing just didn't happen overnight. They kind of felt that that was going to work. So they just let it happen. Yes. And if it took a little bit of time, they don't care. But they're not going to shove stuff down your throat, though. That's the one thing that the old wrestling used to do, that they would just say, well, this guy's a star, so we've determined that he's a star. Right. He's eight feet tall. He's, you know, 300 pounds, and he's a star. Well, well, if the I'll, I'll, go ahead. But if the fans at home don't think so, then you haven't done your job right. And I give credit to Triple H and to Bruce Pritchard for developing – what I think is the best product that we've seen in as long as I can remember. Up and down the card you're talking about. Yeah, now. yeah, because it's all this. I mean, everybody has a chance to become somebody, and they are. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you what I'm uncomfortable with. I don't like father-son feuds. It makes me kind of... Yeah, I, it's I, I, I understand that. Actually, you know what? I, I kind of agree with that. The problem is, is that... It was such a hot feud for so long. I think it was necessary because Ray Mysterio's um, his uh, his his uh, participation is still like he's still a a top shelf wrestler. Like he's not viable. part time. Am I right? right? Yeah. yeah, he's viable. That, viable, viable is a good word. So, in order to, and I think part of the the stuff that they did with his father, with breaking into his house on Christmas Eve, and all of that, all the angles they did, it built him up to be such an unlikable cat. There's no way you could cheer for this kid, even down the road. I don't think there's a way. I'd be surprised if he ever went face. He should stay on this track because it's working. The best part is that they started it slowly, but right. now it's the middle of wherever. He was in, I think, Australia someplace. And I mean in a small town. And literally when he pulled up into the town, there were people sc screaming and booing him. He couldn't even get out of the car. It was so bad. That's awesome. I mean, that's not a violent thing. It's just they right. hate him. Well, congratulations right. to him then. You know, he oh, established yeah. it. He came from nothing. He got out from his father's shadow the, in the most difficult way possible. You want to know something? He did what Eric Watts couldn't do. Yeah. He did what a lot of, uh, you know, second generation, third generations have problems doing. Not Blair's a lot, kid. but there, there's some examples out there. I, Eric Blair. Watts is probably not the best example, but um, I think what they did with him was perfect. But getting back to that match, Len, the thing about Becky Lynch. Now, a lot of people in my house really like Becky Lynch. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I'm not on board, and I can't put my finger on it. I, I, I think it's almost in the same way, Len, that, you would call certain wrestlers kind of like uh, kind of like paper cutouts. Like yeah. she has the personality. She definitely has the skill, but for some reason I'm not on board with her and I don't know what it is. And I really do enjoy Rhea Ripley's work. I think that she's an amazing athlete. I think she brings a lot to the table. She's a good heel uh, and she's come a long way in just a couple of years. And she you know, I saw great. her on, on, sorry, Jim, but I got to get this out before I forget it. That's what happens to me these days. I hear you. Um, <laughs> I saw her on the Hall of Fame, Rhea Ripley. Do you need me to, do you need me to refer you to my neurologist? Or are you okay? <laughs> I think I'm okay. 
so far I'm okay. Okay. Um, I like her better as a face. And how do I know her as a face? When she was on the Hall of Fame and her smile was so genuine and and welcoming and, and yeah. her smile is so distorted on when she's a heel. And I just think that she would shine even more as, as a face. I think eventually no, you're, the, the, you're, way you're right. that, the way that they're going with her, I think she will be a face eventually. No, they, actually, I agree with that. And if you want to see Rhea Ripley more in her as, as herself, yeah, um, you got to look at the workout sessions with Seamus. They're all over the internet. And okay. she does a workout session with Seamus. Yeah. And I, I really enjoy that. I actually got to like Seamus better because you see the human side of him. I really was never a Seamus guy. And I have a lot of respect for how he works out, how dedicated he really is. Yeah. And she was on that show. And she is, she's actually very, very, she's a beautiful woman. Yeah. You know, I, I know the makeup and stuff makes her look, you know, kind of like a, like a, like she should be in a mosh pit or something, but she really it's, is. She's it's stunning. funny because I, I wasn't joking when I said she should have been called the man when I only saw her on the, in the match because oh, she, she, I yeah. mean, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's the power of her acting ability, yeah. not anything physical, but she physically, right looks unpleasing when she's a, a heel and that's by design i think i'm you know she, what i'm saying and she does she, look pretty when she was in the hall of fame uh just reacting it was like wow is this the same person and that's amazing talent right there not only is that but she's very good at putting over the people that she's in charge of putting over oh yeah so everybody associated with her faction you know with um damien priest and yeah uh, all of them that's exactly what she's there for. We're going to be here all night if we don't get on with this. Uh, just a couple well, more things I have about this on. match. I like the match. Rhea Ripley won. Um, I, but I need you guys to answer a question for me. What is the Riptide and what is the Eradicator? They're both moves. Whose moves are they? Riptide is one of the ones Rhea Ripley does. Isn't that Ed where she basically does a reverse net breaker or... Yeah, I think so. Um, and if she's basically put, lifting the person up and just dropping them on their head. Yeah. So it's kind of like a pile driver, only she's putting it flat out. And Becky Lynch did a nice move. Uh, it was called a Tornado DDT. Yes. I like that a lot. A and... lot of people are using that, Len. That's a popular move nowadays, Oh, that so Tornado it's, DDT. It's not unique to her then. No, there are actually yeah. a lot of – I mean, female-wise, yes, I would say unique to her. But on the men's on the men's side, uh, there's quite a few guys that use that. So Becky Lynch wins, and Becky Lynch also has a book out which they kept mentioning. Uh, yeah. It's a it's a bestseller her her autobiography, and uh, I and it's funny because I'm with you a after all these years, Ed. When you first took over, when Paul passed away, everyone said we always had the same opinions, and it's still true. I feel the same about Becky Lynch. I don't know what it is. I'm not. I like her, but I'm not fully, fully on board. Just like what yeah. you said. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I can't put my finger on it though. No, you know? me neither. Match two. Yeah. Now again, you know how I hate abbreviations, especially when I don't know what they mean. <laughs> B I Y. I don't know what the heck that is. That's do versus, it yourself. Ver, do it yourself. Okay. Versus do the Miz do and our truth. Yourself. With, together, they're called the Awesome Truth. And uh, what did you guys think of that one? The latter match? Yes. Yes. It was good. Um, it was a great match, but, the, I mean, it's just spot fest, which is perfectly fine. The only thing that I found funny was the stuff that they did with Truth, where he tries pinning the person when there's no pins allowed. Yeah, and, and I forgot to mention, there's New Catch Republic. Uh, the New Day was there. I can't read my own right. Oh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor <laughs> and yep. Austin Theory and Grayson Weller. Grayson Waller. 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 Yeah. See, I don't it know. It was a really about. obnoxious, obnoxious Australian heel. Yeah. Yeah, but basically the match, I don't know, Ed, what do you think? I thought yeah. the match was good, but. Yeah, you know big. what? For a ladder match, it was good. I've always had a problem with ladder matches that have too many people. And that's a classic example of yeah. two referees and a, and, a, and a ton of camera guys all around the ring. It's, it's, there's too much going on to catch it. Now, we all know where the ending was going to come up. It's not 
any secret that they were going to put over Miz and R Truth. I forgot his name. Now, it's funny because the guys, you know, my kids around here is like, R Truth's been around forever, which he has. Um, but for some reason, he gets the pops out of that crowd and he brings relevance. Unfo- now, it seems strange to say this out loud. He brings relevance back to the Miz. Right. That's true. To me, has been background noise for quite a while now. I mean, you know, the Miz was a top guy. You, everybody forgets he was WWE champion at one time. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's interesting. Now, you know, for ladder matches, um, you know, those are very dangerous and, oh, and, yeah. and, and risky. And with the more people you have in there, the more chance somebody's going to get hurt. Kind of miraculous that nobody did get hurt. Well, I mean, I don't know about that. I guarantee there were injuries. A lot of times we don't really hear about them. Yeah. Um, I think some of these spots they're doing on tables, they, they're getting, I don't want to say like AEW type reckless, but yeah. that match, you, they these teams are out to prove that this is a big event and we're going to do things a little harder. We're going to do things a little faster. And we're going to do things more extreme, which I'm not against. The only thing that I miss, of course, there was no blood. And you know how I am with that. <laughs> You're going to have lattice. Somebody needs to bleed. So the awesome truth won. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and I agree with you again, Ed, about the tag team, you know, uh, with with the ladders and too many people. And, you know, but they picked the right people to win because they have the most charisma. Yes. Uh, awesome. Uh, yeah. The awesome truth. You know, so uh, D. So why do they call them DIY, this other group here? Mostly because they put themselves together and train themselves, and that I think that was the excuse they're using. Okay, all right. Next match: Rey Mysterio and Andrade. Don't know who Andrade is. Oh, oh you killing me. Santos Escobar when? and Dirty Dirty Dominic Mysterio. We just talked about this off camera, right? Um, and you know, I'm uncomfortable with father son feuds. As I mentioned, and I mentioned to my friend of Eve in Israel just now, and um, you know he loves he loves this uh, match. He loves the the whole feud there. I mean, it was fine. The match was fine. Well, listen, I don't know I don't know what he did prior to it, but Andrade has been around. He was in um, the WWE before, then he went to AEW for a while, yeah. and now he's back in WWE. Don't oh, you well, know who he's he's married to? This will help you. Yeah. Who? Ed. Who Andrade is married to? Yes. Rick Flair's daughter. I mean, Rick Flair's daughter. Right? Yeah, he's he's married to Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair. Okay. So Andrade is married to Charlotte Flair. Okay. I mean, not that that has any relevance as, as, as far as the match goes. Yeah. Um, there's one thing about Andrade. If you watch him, I don't want to say he's like, you know, paint drying on a wall, but the guy's got skills, there's no doubt. But what I think Andrade has lacked over the years, and I don't know if you've picked up on this, Jim, is is maybe in the in the in the um, persona department. Not yeah, that he per- doesn't have a personality, but you know he's a high flying luchador, and you got to respect the fact that he's got skills, no doubt. And but I'm not sure uh, he's the total package, for lack of a better term. Uh, you no. know, as far as cutting a promo. And that match wasn't the best. It was great. It was good. It was good. It was good, but it wasn't great. I agree. So so far, uh, we've seen we had three matches or so, and and there were no duds. There were no embarrassing things. Not no yet. horrible yeah. things. <laughs> um, let's move on to the Usos feud, and that's oh, been a did long you say, time coming. Did you say dud match? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's your dud match. The Usos uh, one. Oh yeah. Okay. It now. Wasn't very- why do you say right, that? Jim, now, what did you think the, the Usos match lacked? Like I didn't care. Yeah, exactly. I got to agree with him on this. Now, here's the problem. The Usos feud has been boiling over for over a year now. Okay? Mm-hmm. So one Uso splits off from the bloodline. The other Uso, so there's yeet and no yeet. Now, what the hell a yeet is? Good luck. I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. All right? So one is yeet. The other one is no yeet. Well, Yeet is just he, something that 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 he says. It's just like yes. the yes, crowd likes to repeat it. But but that's yeah. not the problem. The problem is that you have to re- remind me which one is Jimmy and which one is Jay. That well, happened to this, me. At yeah. this point, it doesn't even matter because 
it was almost like putting the young bucks in the ring versus each other. It was super kick this and super kick that. And the problem is his styles are too similar, which is why the match to me should have been better considering their ability. That match should have been better. So is this, it, tell me this, is this the first time that they faced each other since the turn? Um, Oh, individually. Yes. Yeah. I think individually So without being present, from yeah. watching them, uh, my feeling is, and and I'm sure you'll correct me if I'm wrong, that Always. they waited too long to to make them actually face each other. Uh, yeah, I think that could be part of it. I do, I do. I think it could be part of it because to me, the match had marquee status. Like it should have been, for you know, it should have been like a match you were looking forward to, and and to an extent, I was. But it was disappointing. And everybody in the room that was watching said the same thing, like, that match sucked. And to say that, I mean, with the skills that those two guys have, and I think it sucked because of their styles were too similar. And it became like a – if you – the Young Bucks in the, in the in the AEW, okay, which Erica is going to kill me if he hears me say this, but I'm going to say it. They it, suck. It, it, turned, it turned into a spot fest. But it was a spot fest of trading super kicks. I think they didn't know what to do with each other. I think that was the problem too. Could be because they're used to tagging. And the problem part of that too, that Lane just gave it to you. They're used to tagging. They're not used to being by themselves. Right. So that's probably part of the problem. But realistically, there was so much other stuff in that entire show, night one and night two, that basically I think they just got overshadowed. Yes. Yeah, again, yeah. as bad as it might seem, it still wasn't the horrible depths that the no. WWE has sunk to in the no, past. No, it was very oh, God. good. But yeah. No, it was very good. I'm just <laughs> saying that I think that the whole night overshadowed it. And maybe that's because the show itself was so good. But I think you better hurry but so we can move along because there are two nights worth of this stuff. All right. Now we got <laughs> damage control versus the Kabuki Warriors. And I can't even remember that one. Um, well, I think it should just move on from that. That was <laughs> well. I will yeah. say that I will say I didn't even put a winner. That's funny. Who won that? Damage control, I believe. Okay. See, the problem but is, is I went is, to go out food at that point. I went to go co- keep my coffee at that. Yeah. Point. Speaking of that, I got to get water before I start coughing. I'll be right back. Is he moving oh. us? He disappeared, Jim. Where did he go? It's all right. Let's just keep talking without him. <laughs> Well, you know, I'll be honest with you. I did step out in that match. I'm not going to lie because we were doing food at that point. So um, I don't have any intel on it, though, sadly. Hey, you know how it is. You get older. I don't watch as much as I should, but it is what it is. Oh, he's back. Did you keep going? Yes, of course. Yes, we okay. Thank, going. Thank it God. It wasn't a moment of silence. I don't want to have to edit this. No, yeah, no, no, we no, know. No. Trust there us. There it is. Know. There, yeah. yeah, get that water. Hydration, yeah. All right, now, <laughs> Sami Zayn versus okay. Gunther, the ring general. Okay, first of all, we're going to make a correction here. Okay. For the rest of the show, we'll not refer to him as Gunther. He is Walter. All right, that's how I'm going to refer to him. Why? Walter. Because that's his friggin' name, Walter. Well, that they advertised him on TV as Gunther. I know what they advertised him. I'm just telling you. Jim, that match was fantastic. Yes, it was. Now, I agree. here's the thing. Now, obviously, Walter or Gunther, okay, had held that title for for so long that I don't think, and myself included, I didn't believe Sami Zayn was going over. Now, I will give Sami Zayn credit. He's the one guy in WWE who is always the uh, underdog. Like, he always seems like he's getting the crap beat out of him, and somehow he comes back, and then you're going to pin him, and somehow he kicks out. He's one of those guys. Now, normally, like in AEW, when there's three super kicks, two pile drivers, and, and, a, and, a, and a 450, and the guy still kicks out, I get upset. <clears throat> you all right over there, Len? I'm looking for my volume. I just remembered I could put Am, down... am I too loud again? No, it's it's okay. Now you All can right, be as loud enough. as you want because I put down the volume of my head. Well, good. I'm glad you did because I want to be loud. So my point being is that <laughs> Sami Zayn is, to me, is like the underdog guy. And when you look at Walter or Gunther, you know, he's uh, he just didn't look like you were going to beat him. 
and the fact that he did and the pop that you got, I think was worth it. They, it yeah. was just straight up professional wrestling. Very well, good storytelling. Yes. And the ending was perfect. Yeah. And I think it elevated both of them to the class that they showed. The last time I saw Sami Zayn, he was against uh, Kevin Owens. That was a long, long time ago. And they've since, yeah. you know, they, they're, they're in real life, they're close friends. And uh, they're always showing them, like, giving each other high fives and stuff like that. Well, you and, know, their history is going back and forth. They're yes. with each other. They're against each other. That's been going yeah. on for a little while now. Goes back to NXT. Yeah. Awesome. So, But Sami Zayn puzzles me how he's successful because – even in this match, he seemed like he was asleep through most of the match. Well, he didn't seem his, like he was paying attention. That's his everyday personality. So that's, but that's what gets him over. The last time I saw him, he had a cap on with no beard. It seems yep. he's more over with the beard. I have seen him wrestle with the beard. Uh, well, he he used to come out to the ring looking like a like a, a Cuban revolutionary. Yeah, now he's, know, yeah. Like, he looks yeah. like the everyman now. Exactly. He looked, he looked actually too young to be a wrestler at one point to me. Mm. I don't know. But uh, I, the comeback was, was very good. You didn't expect it because he seemed so sleepy. He's <laughs> just like, I don't know. It's just like, you know, in any other wrestler, you'd say, is this guy even trying to, to make a good match? But that's part of his persona and part of his gimmick, I guess. Well, I mean, his persona is to, like I said, to come from from below. He's the underdog, and and if you watch how he is when he fires himself up, he gets the crowd going, and he's been yeah. doing this for a while now. Even when he was in and out with the bloodline and doing that whole gimmick and everything else, and all those storylines, it was a nice addition to what was going on between him and Roman Reigns. And, yeah. and the Usos and everything else, you know, was he with them? Was he against them? So I think that's the Sami Zayn match was uh, on night one was probably the match of the night. What do you think, Glenn? I liked it a lot too. And this guy, the ring general reminds me of an old style uh, Nazi gimmick from the sixties. Well, they, they kind of, they kind of brush in a little bit on that. Like Definitely. Waldo Von Erich, remember him yes. and, Fritz von Erich in, in that in those times. Well, I used to say he looked like Walter Kowalski when he was younger. Yeah. Either yeah. way, he did a great. I think he's a good wrestler. So that was a good match. Yeah. How it much was. time do we? How much time do we have? And how many matches left do we have for between the two nights? Uh, well, this is the last match of night one, which is The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody and Seth Rollins. I refuse to say Freak and Rollins, by the way. <laughs> I don't blame That's fine. you. <laughs> but I thought it was excellent and a great setup for the night, too. Yes. Well, if you think of it, it had to be that way. If right. you have a stipulation like that, if it's so anticlimactic, if Cody had won and, and there's no interference, you know, let's go to sleep now, you know? No, but they literally went at it in a great way, where basically he was basically taunting the referee the whole night, telling him, F you, you're going to get fired, the whole thing. And yeah. it was cre it was creative. Yeah. You know what was going to happen, but they made it creative enough by him just o going over the top on it. I like the final boss gimmick because it's kind of a dig at McMahon without saying his name. Oh, my God. Oh, it's definitely gigging. Well, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. So when you hear them say, whereas this is a new era and Triple H this and Triple H that, and they keep bringing up a new era, boy, is it. It is kicking McMahon in the teeth. I don't care what anybody says. It because, really is. And But I'm going to tell you one thing. There is a stark difference between the booking in the McMahon era and the booking, and we're going to call it the Triple H era. Mm -hmm. You can see it. And one of the things, Leonard, and I don't know if you picked up on this, there's one element of all these shows, especially last night at WrestleMania, there was one thing that has been – aggravating me for over 15 years and they finally slowed down on it. And what do you think that is? The camera shaky, work. The shaky camera angles. The shaky camera. I saw so, a couple though. No, no, there was. No, they listen, they don't get it out of the system yet. Right. But it's before when they would fight out of the ring lane, it was unwatchable. I know. Now I it's know. not that way. In fact, they're getting more creative on like they're dipping the camera low and they're doing, I don't know what you call that shot Len, when you're low and you point up at the guys, you know, or they're, they're getting somebody coming off the rope 
down yeah. off the, you know, out of the rain yeah. when they're doing it from a low shot. Yeah, it's almost like using the camera as a character yes. and, and you're getting jumped on. It's almost like using a jib cam. Yeah, yeah they've done, they've done a great. The creativity with the camera angles and everything is perfect. Yeah, it it's was very, about, very it's suitable part, for WrestleMania. It's part of the whole booking stuff where actually right now they're so creative that they're just letting people literally do the job that they need to do. It sounds like almost like people are just so relieved that McMahon is not around anymore, that they're experimenting. They're like kids having fun now. The the Their mommy and daddy are gone. Well, here's proof of the pudding, so to speak. Think about it. Ed and I talked to us before. I stopped watching NXT because they had Triple H doing it at the beginning, and it was excellent. And the man said, no, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to do it for a while. He did it, and I stopped watching it. Yep. Yeah. And then and, he and left. It, and you could tell right when it went from Triple H booking back to McMahon, NXT was getting wrecked. And that was the hottest show out there. That was that was the the watch show. That was the show out of SmackDown and Raw and whatever. NXT was the one you wanted to see because it was all wrestling. And one thing you can't fault Triple H for, he's got such an old school mentality. He comes from the, the Killer Kowalski training. And yeah. something that Walter Kowalski instilled in Triple H or Paul Levesque, as they're calling him now, which I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, something was instilled in him a long time ago, a sense of tradition, a sense of uh, storytelling, a sense of how to book a match. I don't think he learned these things from McMahon. I think he learned how to, how to, um, how to do things in a gigantic way from Vince McMahon. But I think the, 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 the meat and potatoes, I think he learned from his time with Walter Kowalski. Even the, the IWF. way back then. The Len, IWF. think about it. When he was terrorizing and he cut that promo yeah. with you and me, saying yeah. that he was going to be world champion, yeah. I almost feel like he actually believed it. Yeah, I do too. So that tells too. me something about him. So I, yeah. I look forward. I, it's the first time in a long time that I actually look forward to something from WWE. And that's something, that's really something, you know, I can't imagine I, years from now, I think when man McMahon has passed on, they'll do an interview with Triple H and he'll feel freer maybe to say like how he felt having full control, but he can't right. say it now, you know, and right. obviously he's going to be careful because Stephanie's still his wife, you know, but I'd that's like to know right. his real feelings, you know. Well, his real feelings were he chose to keep the company. And he kept his stock, and he made McMahon sell his stock. The Rock and him basically forced him out. Yeah, I did not. I didn't know the detail there. Wow. The boy, the boy has forced him out. Wow. Len, let's move on. We got a lot to cover. Night two. Night two. So uh, we've got another announcer. Oh, this lady uh, is it the same? Samantha Irvin is the announcer. Yeah. And she had. It. Did anyone? Oh. Did Brian notice the beetle tattoo on her? Oh, I yeah, had I know an Abbey, I did. Abbey Road tattoo. All right, she, Len. She does a great job. She does an amazing job. But the whole time I said, I wish Len was here because I wanted to know if you felt that she was over the top and too much on how she announced. I well, don't, but what I, was your I, opinion? I, I, I kind of felt she was going to have a heart attack, actually. <laughs> you know, I mean, she was, she was sincere, okay? Yes. I think because she's not a big girl that it looked like she was straining. It didn't look fake, but it looked like she was straining. Oh, it's 40 and... degrees outside. She's probably freezing half the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and, it, you know what? Right. And she's in a, she's in a dress that's got a high cut on it. So it must've been cold. That, that I was kind of worried about the girl. That's, that's, that's my reaction. But I, I got to tell job, you, though. I got to tell you, um, remember when Lillian Garcia came in? I was not a fan. Yeah, okay? that's right. Now, I met Lillian Garcia very recently, and, and I found her to be a very nice person and everything else. And she's an amazing singer. I'll give her that. But mm -hmm. I had a hard time, and this may sound sexist, but I, I'm going to be honest here. I had a hard time after the whole uh, Howard Finkel of, of moving to a female announcer. Um, and it took me yeah. a long time to get on board with Lillian Garcia, but this girl immediately, I mm -hmm. said, man, this, there's something about her that has kind of like a main event feel. I like it. So I, I think we should stick with her. What happened to Jojo? Good question. I was asking the same thing. 
Yeah, I I, I kind of miss JoJo. I like JoJo too. You know, but I agree. Yeah, this girl is good. You know, and and your your honesty is appreciated on that because at that time there were no female wrestling announcers right. that right. I can think of. So uh, I think a lot you echo what a lot of people were thinking. A lot of most yeah. wrestling fans are men. You know, and it's nothing no, it's against true. women. It's true. You know, it's true, but uh, definitely good. Now let's go on to. Drew McIntyre against okay. Seth Rollins with a bad right. knee. I enjoyed this a heck of a lot. That this is actually the first match I saw in WrestleMania because I started on night two. Yep. Okay. Yep. And and it blew me away. And I said, Wow, is this what WWE is like now? Because Drew McIntyre, I remember when he was beardless and small and skinny. And it's like, what's this guy going to be now? He looks like a buccaneer, like a pirate or something yeah, really fearsome. But the best part was the setup. So he starts talking and jabbering after the match, and he get, loses the title to Damian Priest like a minute later. It was <laughs> perfect. Right. We have to talk about him for a minute. Now, Len, yeah. we've talked about people who are cardboard cutouts, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That was a famous phrase. We have several wrestlers throughout time that that – you and I have agreed and disagreed. We're yeah. cardboard cutouts. I know you have yours and I have mine. Yeah. I I was not, and I'm going to be honest on this. I was not on board with Drew McIntyre. And again, it I wasn't was because of lack of skill. It for mm-hmm. some reason his promos didn't work for me. But in the last six months, mm-hmm. this guy has been cutting promos. I don't know if he got coaching or what. He's been cutting amazing promos, and now all of a sudden. I'm becoming a McIntyre guy. Yeah, it was great. It was great, 100%. But here's the thing. Drew McIntyre, everybody seems to forget he was world champion, WWE world uh, champion, I'm sorry, Mm -hmm. in a time during COVID with no audience. This guy has got the short end of the stick, not once when he was champion, no audience, not twice when it was video screens and still no audience. But now he finally wins the title, and then he loses it five minutes later to Damian Priest. Yeah, yeah, that's not right. This I didn't guy like can't, it. I didn't like that. Whoever booked that, I just Triple H is wrong on that one. I'm sorry. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I enjoyed I thought, it. I, I, thought, I enjoyed it, but I, I thought that he, too. I think that that was on purpose to gain him more fans because now everyone's gonna be on his side. They're pushing him as a face. That's the way to do it. Yes. I do you think they push him as a face, Jim? No, I think got more of a tweener. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Like the old Jake the Snake kind of half and half tweener. Yeah. Especially because I think that Damian Priest is very over now. You know, as a um heel or face, whatever you want to call him. Yeah. He's definitely a heel. But I can say this they have a big show coming up in Scotland. And you can bet they're not going to drop Drew McIntyre at this point. No, it's going to be Drew, it's going to be McIntyre versus um, Priest for sure. Oh, I yeah, I well, you got to well, could be against Punk. I, I would say it would more like more likely if Punk is uh, is finally through his injury, which when he tore that when he tore that arm brace yeah. off, it seemed to me like. Uh, he wasn't so injured anymore. So I got to tell you, I was really impressed with Punk and how he came across very realistic. I believed it almost like I believed the night, the 2011 uh, pipe oh, bomb yeah. thing. Yeah. I, I, I was intrigued by the back and forth after the match. And yep. it was pretty stupid if that was had been real for you know to, him to get in Punk's face when he won the belt, you know. And I love cr- what Punk said. What are you bringing me into this for? <laughs> it was creative. So funny. It was creative. And even if they had scripted that, they probably didn't script too much of it. They just said, this is the parameters. Do whatever you're going to do. And it just made a lot of sense. And basically speaking, the look on his face was classic. When he came around the corner, I just thought it was yeah. great. We better hurry. Yeah, that. It, it was well done. It definitely was well done. And a good surprise, actually. I agree with that. So and and so Punk played a big role in that match. Not to take anything away from Drew McIntyre or Damian Priest. This is the first time I ever knew of Damian Priest's existence. By the way, 
<laughs> and by the way, Seth Rollins, you got to give a lot of credit for him. First of all, can we talk about the outfits? I mean, like, yeah. he has the craziest outfits I think he's ever been displayed on a WrestleMania show or any show for that matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they were they were wild. <laughs> That's for sure. Very what wild. What else you got, Len? Uh, we got, uh, so McIntyre is the new champ, and then he loses it in a minute. Blah, blah, blah. The money in the bank thing, I have to say, I don't, I, I never liked it. And I still that was I the hate perfect, it now. That was the perfect place to do that, though. It was, but I still don't like, I never liked the concept, and I still hate it. Okay. Um, oh, the almighty Bobby Lashley. Can what the that? heck is this almighty can we, crap? Can we skip that? Yeah, uh, let, the let's just move team. on. It was a Philly street fight with Bubba Dudley as the referee. That's fine. I like Dudley, but the whole thing was yeah. bad. Doesn't yeah, belong was, as a referee. I, I, I gotta, I gotta agree on that one. That was, that was a bathroom break. And Paul Ellering, his legacy, I wouldn't even I admit I that I was in that match. You know, you gotta remember that Paul Ellering used to come out with Rocco back in the day. So, uh, yeah, if so, there's money to be made, Paul is there. I can't so, blame him. Let, okay. I got a vent here. What is this trend about naming a tag team without naming its members? What the heck is that all about? I don't like that at all. They do, but what? they just don't they don't emphasize it. No, but sometimes they leave leave out the names completely. I noticed that that, that happened a lot. When there's a lot of people in there and they're trying to save time or it's a new day, a new way, Len. It, it's just not right th for the wrestlers. You know, they, they yeah. got to get their due. That match you know? is not very good. So, so, so this is the clunker of the two nights. I yes. would say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I agree. And, and do, do not call Bobby Lashley the almighty. Okay. Well, I don't need to, cause I don't bother watching him anyway. Not, no. Hey, you got to admit one thing. Yeah. Bobby Lashley has not changed in appearance, both physically and his face. The oh, I agree. Not aged. Nothing against Bobby. He is Lashley. not aged. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I am. Right? I'm just. I'm paying tribute to a local wrestler who passed away, Mad Dog Rishow. What? He said, yeah, he he passed away a couple of days what? ago. In oh, the I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear yeah. that. Yeah. So his famous line on our show was, "Don't don't mention that name again, okay." And then he attacked wow. Paul. But, oh man, those are good times. Yeah, and kendo sticks. Hold on before we move okay, on. Yeah, stop with the kendo sticks. They it dumb. was a blend. It was a street fight. Of course, they're gonna bring out the kendos. Uh, a bad yeah. job of it too. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't exactly ECW style, but it is. No. Let, how much time we got, Len? We don't it's run pro out pro wrestling, not not pro kendo sticks. All right. Yeah, I'm going to go watch time. some candlesticks now. How much okay. time do we have? Left? L.A. Knight versus A.J. Styles. Now, the reason... I haven't seen Styles in a long time. He was lacking something there. I don't know what. Yeah, but, ring but... rust. Styles is, Styles is like 46 years old. I mean, give the guy a break for he crying out loud. I didn't realize that. He did look yeah. different. That's why he looked different. Well, it's not that he looked different. I mean, I think, I think athletic-wise, he looked great. Yeah. Um, but I think what and his moves were pretty much the same. I think with AJ Styles and people are going to hate me for saying this, it was kind of the same old, same old with him. Yeah. You know. Um. And 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 you know what? He does what he does, and I don't know. I guess you get sick of it every once in a while. But here's the thing about LA Knight that I want to bring up. They're missing the boat in this guy for some reason. They had an opportunity a couple months ago to really elevate him, and again. They're gonna. It's gonna be a ten year too late again on this guy, and it's gonna be too late. I'm telling you, they so, gotta strike now. Guess who I thought L.A. Knight was because oh, I, I had never seen him before. Guess Zach Ryder. Zach Ryder. Did I tell you that already? Yes, because you spent thirty minutes looking it up while we were on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I did that. You do need to see my neurologist. That's that's. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe or oh geez, okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Len, it's he, all doesn't right. he look like Zach Ryder? He he looks like Zach yeah, Ryder. Yeah, no, he looks like Zach. I could see that. I could see the the comparison there. So the next thing That's was funny. that they had they they took a look at the Hall and of Fame to, inductee. Do we need to we'll send the notes of show. our? Do we need to put notes in our 
that I've sent that we've talked about so that you know what we've talked about before. <laughs> I, I'm reading notes. <laughs> okay. I got notes in front of me. I right, couldn't let, do this on live TV in the studio. All right, just let, just checking. My all face right. is buried. I'm trying to read my horrible writing. Um, <laughs> okay, so the next thing was um, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, every man for himself, and and Logan Paul was the uh, the very good there. very good match, but yeah. it's just what it was. It is what it was, but. It built up to the not the last match. All right, let, let's talk a little bit about Logan Paul. So Logan Paul, an internet sensation, but you can you cannot leave out the fact that this guy has no question about it. Spent some time in the ring training, because he pulls off stuff that you wouldn't think a and I'll call him more of a part time professional wrestler. It's amazing what he can do. Okay, and now you don't have to like him, and he's not supposed to be likable. Okay, so it, it's working for him. But somehow the difference between him and, and, and Rey Mysterio's kid, Dominic, okay, is I think really people really hate Logan Paul, and, and maybe it's because they do think he sucks. Now, does he suck in the ring? No. Oh. He's got athletic ability. He can He can pretty much wrestle anybody, and you've seen it. All right. I so think I, the I think the reason that they hate him, I think that I think you're right. I think they legitimately hate him. Just don't like him personally yeah. because he's a jerk off the air. Yes. Yeah. How do you know yeah, that? I've heard that? Well, yeah, because all reports are he's a jerk off yeah. the air, like um, in his personality when he deals with people at the airport. Plus, a, he's just an overall jerk. Yeah. Hmm. And people remember that, so that's the reason why they don't like him. Okay, guys, answer this question. Who the heck is ISO Speed and what kind of a name is that? Some rapper. <laughs> Why is he dressed like a milk carton? Well, no, that's okay. it. Uh, yeah, can you want to answer that, Jim? Well, that's because Logan Paul has the com company called um, Prime. Prime, and it's like an energy drink. And he works with, oh, he works with Logan Paul. Therefore, yep. that's why they stuck him in the outfit. And that match boils down to basically him getting, you know, basically dropped in his head. It, by yes. And now, our... Len, let me explain this, too, yeah. that the 20 somethings that were in my house watching this right. popped like you couldn't believe yep. when they attacked him in that when he revealed himself. The popper, I said, who the hell is that? They pop for ISO speed. Yes. In the milk carton. Yes. Did they pop for the milk carton? They popped yes. for the fact that he was in the milk carton and got his ass whooped. But that was all so, that match was for. Oh exactly. My. Exactly. So Logan Paul wins the U.S. championship. Yes. He still retains the U.S. championship. Retains it. All yes. right. Now, another great match. I love this match. Bailey uh, versus Ioski. <laughs> I didn't pronounce that Yo right. Sky. Yo, Sky, Yo, Sky, Yo, Sky. Yo, Sky versus Len, do need to have, do, do we need with, to have with, this? with damage control? Yes, I'm going to see your neurologist. Okay. Wait, <laughs> I love it, Len. You you made my night. All right. So, all right, check this out. I'm I'm a you know how there's a Paul Heyman guy. Yeah. I'm a Bailey guy. Yeah, I yeah, like Bailey. Right? I I like Bailey a lot. I think mm -hmm. she's. I think she's a heck of a manager type. I think she's a heck of a wrestler. Yeah. I think she brings a lot to the ring. Um, yeah. Io Sky, you can't take anything away from her. Skill wise, amazing, amazing. Um, I, you know, I got to say, I like the match. Uh, it was very suitable for WrestleMania. Certainly had its place. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what more can you really say. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I love that you butchered that name, Len. <laughs> and I and I made it a point to try to remember it, but you know my my memory kind of slips. No me. worries. Anyway, so we're down to the main event here. All right, so here we are to the build up on the main event, right? So the main event now is bloodline rules. Now nobody really knows at that point what a bloodline rule is. Yeah. Right. They don't yeah. really reveal what it is. And well, I never really did. Basically, all they said yeah. was. That means it's no rules, no disqualification match. Was basically all it meant. Exactly. Right. The I, best part was that didn't you think the best part, Len Ed, was that C Cody Rhodes basically started off just saying, "Well, screw it. If that's what it is, then I'm just going to cheat too." Yeah, 
Yeah, of course. I mean, John Cena yep. ran it. Everybody and his mother. All right, ran can we in. talk about the run-ins now? Yeah. All right, I, I was hey, good. I enjoyed them. All right, this is where we're going to differ here. Okay, the match itself, excellent. A I like the way it went back and forth, right? And I like the fact that you had a feeling that there was this could have been another loss for Cody Rhodes. There was right. always that 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 screw the fans again. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. Eric said if Cody Rhodes Rhodes lost, that he wasn't going to watch WWE anymore. Yeah. And he was so pissed the last time he lost because he was upset that you know uh, that Roman Reigns once again. You know, was 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 you know at head of the table and the champion and so on and so forth. Well, this night turned awfully strange. Yeah. Now, I got a video here, Len, on my phone. Okay, mm -hmm. and I can't show it, but I'll show you off the air at some point. It's this well wrestling fan. I don't want to say Mark because that's mean, but it really is a Mark. He his reaction to this is so. Oh, hard. I saw that. That was pathetic. It was pretty bad. It was. It was pretty pathetic. bad. It was it sure like he's... that guy that we always made fun of for years? The guy that yes, went... yes, yes, exactly. Oh, it but was maybe like worse that. than that. He said some things that I cannot say on the air because you're going to have to bleep it out, so I won't. So yeah. anyway, getting past that. All right. So the first run in. Who was the first run in? Sequoia. Sequ Solo Sequoia, right? So a Sequoia, right? So he runs yeah. in. All right. All right. That makes sense. He runs in. The second one who runs in, John Cena. Cena yeah. Right? That, that Everybody was... said, John Cena. Okay. Now I'm like, okay. Now you know The Rock's going to come out at some point. You knew that was going to happen. Of but course. The Undertaker? Yeah. I, yeah. I, at some point I said, you know, there's such a thing as overbooking. Would yeah. that be a that, classic example of overbooking? Yeah. yeah, but in the end, I thought it all worked out. And yes, it was overbooking, but honestly, I was waiting. You almost were sitting there saying, okay, when's the next one? So who's going to right. match who? And is it going to get over at some point? And I'm right. looking at the clock saying, well, it's got to end because the pay-per-view's got to end at 11 something because it can't go more than a certain amount of time. And I just thought that in the end, it worked out perfect. And it generated, I think, years of good publicity for the WWE. Moving forward, yes, hundred percent. I really enjoyed this match, and uh, there was a lot of skills involved on both sides, and the run-ins were were good. But I, I questioned uh, the Undertaker. Some comment uh, online, somebody said the Undertaker is the new final boss. I happened to read that before I saw the match. Oh. Interesting, and, and and I and I and I kind of fell for it. Like I thought that's what they were really doing by bringing him in. No, you know. Well, you know what? The good part is, is we don't really know what is next. Yeah, and I think that that's what's really good about the title change now, because yeah. now they're calling it. It's a new era. We got a new champion. Yeah. Um, you know. We'll see how this goes. And who knows? Yeah. Maybe, maybe Roman Reigns needs a break. You know, take some time off the road sort of thing. Um, yeah. You know, he does still have leukemia, correct? Yes. Yeah. In, re in I, remission. Yeah, but it, it's amazing that he was able to still perform at the level he was. Because yeah. they said he was like, what did they call him? The part-time guy? Like, he only wrestled, uh, you know, once a month. and. I thought um, it was like three times a year. Three times a year. Yeah, well, yeah, well, exactly. Um, which, hey, listen, I'm not a wrestler. Who, who knows? One time would be enough for me. I'd be over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Len, me what too. do we got for time? Me too. We're still okay. We're not getting any warning. So we have time to talk about the Hall of Fame a little bit. Thank you. Good. I Excellent. would love to talk about the Paul Heyman induction. Yes. Um, it, it was phenomenal speech by Heyman, and it was all extemporaneous. He did not prepare he even nope. claimed that he wasn't going to prepare. But for the first time, I actually saw him, and we all saw him be a little bit nervous because he wasn't doing his character. He right. was speaking from the heart. He was speaking from reality. And he, uh, you know, just the same talent as when he's a character, but he was reacting to what the crowd wanted. They wanted him to talk about ECW, and he 
eventually got into that and he put on his old ECW outfits to, yep. you know, I could see him gathering the stuff together. You know, we got 10 minutes left, by the way. Now we're Listen, getting a little morning. The, the one thing is, and Len, you have to remember way, way back when we first met yep. Paul Heyman, Paul, yep. Paul E. Dangerously, okay? Yeah. Yep. And I have a great photo with him uh, yeah, me, with his phone. Too. Me and too. you do too. Yeah. Um, he, he, even at that time, his personality, even with talking with us in the back, you could see this guy was going to be something special. Yeah. You know, you probably yeah. didn't know really know where he was going to go. Yeah. But I almost feel like it's not over for him. That right. when he says there's more, there's more mayhem to come. I, I right. feel like he has the ability to keep going to a, to an extent, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, even if he's not with the bloodline somehow, even if he hooks back up with, um, uh, uh, with punk, you know, uh, he yeah. complimented punk quite a bit. He so, did. and he bought up Brock Lesnar, which was pretty amazing to me. I was, um, I was shocked by that as well. Yeah. yeah. So, I think I've got another shocker. I heard that they're bringing ECW back. Well, well, if it's anything would... like the old ECW copy nope. that the WWE made, I don't want it. No, but if it's like real be... ECW. That's great, you know. The, the... Now the three of us have experienced ECW up close oh. during the toaster oh, yeah. incident in Revere. Yep. Uh, yes. When that poor kid got clocked by New Jack. Uh, well, he got you know. Let's call it what it was. He had a surgical knife to his to take into his head. Yeah. You know, yeah. at the time, Len, what you and I didn't see was yeah. how he bladed that kid. What we yeah. saw was the toaster. Yeah. You know? I think if if I knew that, then I, I probably would have been afraid of New Jack instead of uh, interviewing yeah. him the way I did. You well, should have been. Yeah. I mean, I, was I told lucky. you to be afraid of him. <laughs> <laughs> I was more afraid of Kamala when he ate our pizza that time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, uh, the, the Heyman thing was really good. Yeah. Um, and well and, deserved. And Medusa inducted Bo Nakano. Yeah, she, she made a really good speech. And um, all right, Len, can I say something? Yeah, because my whole life I have been pronouncing it Bo Nakano. Okay, and I'm told. So I said, "Well, wait a second. My whole life, that's how I pronounced that woman's name, yeah. and I've been wrong since the '80s." Yeah, and I never heard you say it, or I would have corrected you. Mo. That, correct, correct me now. And her name is not Bull. It's I, I, Medusa was calling her by her real name, but I, they, that's where they got Bull from. Bull or something. I, I yeah. can't remember what it is. Yeah. But she, uh, saw, she, she looked very genuinely, um, acceptance. Uh, yeah. you know, it was an honor for her to accept it, which is, which I thought was nice. Yeah. And then, uh, Wyndham and Rotundo, uh, inducted, uh, Bray Wyatt. And, you know, yeah. that's a very heartfelt thing and very sad. But, man, it was shocking to see how old Wyndham and Rotundo were. I mean, I'm probably the well, same age or a little older than yeah. than, than, uh, than Wyndham. But the oh, beard... I, look good. I look good compared to them. <laughs> Stop, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I don't know what this trend is. Like, when people get older, they, they, may, they have beards that, and you can't recognize them anymore. It's okay do. to change, Len. It's okay to change. Remember that one time when you had a goatee? Yeah. Well, you know when you went heel? I was, I yeah, I was, I was a lot younger then. I wouldn't wear I it thought, now because I, I wouldn't want it to be gray. I thought you should. I thought you should have kept it. I kept it long enough, long enough for it to bug me when I was eating. So I. Oh well, there. I can't blame you on that one. And I had got my picture taken with Elizabeth, the poor late Elizabeth. I wish I didn't have that damn goatee when I had it. <laughs> we all have regrets in life, Len. That that was a regret. But yep. anyway, anything to add about the Hall of Fame? I'm not going to mention some of the other ones because I, you know, I think they're not that familiar to most people because well, they go way, way, way back. Thunderbolt Patterson obviously goes way, way back. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you one thing, Jim. Do you remember when Thunderbolt Patterson was on um, the Morton Downey yeah. show? Yes. And he was on with Dr. D, David Schultz. Yeah, that was funny. It, it was. And what was really interesting is when he was talking about how he had experienced Sorry, racism back in the days, early days of professional wrestling. And Dr. D was basically, I'm just, I'm not going to say what he said, but it was interesting that that show today wouldn't be on TV. 
No Can way. Can we agree on that? No way it would. You could see that, by the way, on YouTube. The whole show is there. It, it's actually fascinating. I've actually watched uh, the Donahue one with McMahon and uh, Bruno San Martino and superstar Billy Graham talking about all of that Ring Boy stuff and all this stuff kind of all of a sudden started popping up on YouTube for some reason. Um, I think obviously it's based around what was happening with Vince. But uh, that one was very interesting with Thunderbolt Patterson. What was his era of... of uh, Thunderbolt Patterson? Yeah. 60s and 70s into early 80s. Yeah. It's, it's funny. I don't recall him at all. Yeah. Well, because Len, he wasn't in the WWE. Well, he might have done a spot here and there, but he was mostly in the South. Okay. Mid Real South. South. Real yeah, South. Way there. Yeah, like Louisiana and down in there, what I think was his stomping ground. I didn't know that much about him, too, to be honest with you. Yeah, and there's probably people I'm missing now as well because uh, I, I I I was tired because I, I crammed WrestleMania <laughs> in the Hall of Fame so that we could you, do this show. You did show. good, Len. You did good. Uh, well, thanks. We're, proud, we're proud of you. It yeah. could be better, but thank you very much. I appreciate it. No, I it. think it was good. So, guys, um, what should we do now? Should we end the show? Yeah, I'm getting a little shaky here. Let's take it home. All right. Let's go. So I'm Leonard Kaplan. Thank you for joining us here on Wrestling Talk. And uh, any last words, guys? Thank you for having us again. Yeah, it was fun. We appreciate it. Appreciate the work you're doing, Len. And you're going to say it. I'm not going to. All right. This is Leonard Kaplan for James Quinlan III and Jim. And Jim. I'm going to do it again. Now, that's my one edit now. It's your edit. <laughs> this is Leonard Kaplan for Ed Whittier and James Quinlan III saying so long and stay in the ring.